Hello, my name is David Miliband, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the Global Ocean Commission. We're an independent group of people committed to reverse the degradation of the high seas. The 17 members of the Global Ocean Commission come from all corners of the world. Together, we have been on a voyage of discovery about the global ocean, its importance, its peril, and its potential. The global ocean covers two-thirds of our planet. It contains extraordinary diversity of life and natural resources, from the shallowest shoreline to the deepest ocean trench. We are not ocean experts, but we have come to understand that it's no exaggeration to say that all life on Earth, including our own survival, depends on a healthy, living ocean. Almost half the oxygen we breathe comes from the ocean, and a quarter of the carbon dioxide we produce is absorbed by it. The ocean determines the weather, tempers our climate, and recycles rain, fresh water, and life-giving nutrients such as nitrogen. It's a vital part of the whole Earth system, and billions of us rely on it for food, transport and energy, recreation and livelihood. We found cause for wonder, but also alarm. The global ocean is in a cycle of decline, driven by a number of related and reinforcing factors. Pressure on resources, technological advances, pollution, ocean acidification and poor governance are pushing the ocean system to the point of collapse, resulting in declining fish stocks, diminishing biodiversity and extensive habitat loss. Humanity's ever-increasing need for food, energy, minerals and medicines is changing the high seas forever. Companies are developing the technology to explore and mine thousands of meters below the ocean surface, with some oil wells now deeper than three kilometers. Deep sea species are being studied for uses in medicine, for cancer, and omega-rich oil from krill has recently become a popular health supplement. But of immediate danger, increasingly powerful engines and refrigeration have allowed ships to travel further from shore and catch greater quantities of fish. Bottom trawl fishing extends below 2,200 meters across all oceans and affects 15 million square kilometers of seafloor every year. The United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization estimates that about two-thirds of fish stocks are exploited to their maximum sustainable limit and one-third beyond that limit. Many stocks of the largest fish, such as tuna and swordfish, are below 10% of their historical level. In other words, 90% are already gone. This overfishing is fueled by consumer demand and by oversized fleets, which in turn are encouraged by huge government subsidies for fishing. Countries grant at least $35 billion a year in fishing subsidies. Quite simply, too many vessels are competing for too few fish. This fuels illegal, unregulated and unreported fishing, which accounts for up to 20% of the global wild marine catch, causing annual economic losses of up to $23.5 billion. The World Bank calculates that in total, mismanagement of fisheries costs the world economy about $50 billion per year. On top of all that we take out of the ocean, there is also what we put in. Over 80% of marine pollution comes from land-based activities, including fertilizers, pesticides, and other chemical compounds, radioactive wastes, sewage, garbage, plastics, and oil. All of these activities undermine ocean health at the exact same time as the ocean faces an onslaught unseen in human history from the effects of climate change. Rising levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide are causing the ocean to warm, acidify and lose oxygen, a deadly trio of impacts. The rate of change in the pH of the ocean is unparalleled in the last 300 million years. Effects are being observed already. Organisms are migrating to cooler waters, away from traditional breeding and feeding grounds. Shells are weakening and the livable space for large fish is shrinking. To cap it all, Ocean governance is woefully inadequate. On the high seas, the global commons that covers 45% of our planet, it could almost be said that anarchy rules the waves. Coastal states have a vested interest in and responsibility for the health of their own jurisdictional waters, which extend 200 nautical miles from shore. What happens on the high seas, beyond these waters, is the responsibility of the international community. But the tragedy of the commons is that what belongs to everyone belongs to no one, 
and the result is that no one is in effective charge and we all lose. There is little capacity to enforce fishing rules or punish those who flout them. Authorities often don't know which vessels are fishing where. Unlike passenger and large merchant ships, fishing vessels don't carry globally standardized identification numbers. Neglect by the majority and abuse by a minority have fueled the cycle of ocean decline. Regional stability, food security, and our children's future are all under threat. So how do we stop this cycle of decline, reverse ocean degradation, and restore ocean health? We have been inspired by the opportunity to chart a new way forward. By listening to experts from science, academia, business, and NGOs, we've identified eight proposals that show what needs to be done to stimulate a cycle of ocean recovery. We need, first, high seas governance fit for the 21st century, led by an agreement to give teeth to the existing UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and a UN Special Representative for the Ocean to foster and coordinate action at the highest level. Second, a standalone UN Sustainable Development Goal for the Global Ocean, with specific targets and indicators to mobilize resources for ocean recovery. Third, Elimination of harmful fishing subsidies, which make fishing on the high seas profitable. Our governments have promised this before at various summits. They now need to put their words into action. Fourth, stronger incentives and controls, such as mandatory identification numbers on all high seas fishing vessels and a ban on transshipment of fish at sea to end illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing. Fifth, an end to plastic pollution through increased producer accountability and coordinated action to increase waste avoidance, recycling, and to improve waste management. Sixth, binding safety and environmental standards for offshore oil and gas exploration and exploitation and universal liability provisions. Seventh, an independent Global Ocean Accountability Board to benchmark on a regular basis and monitor progress made towards achieving the Commission's proposals. Eighth, a high seas regeneration zone free of industrial fishing to allow ocean life to recover if and where insufficient progress is made in improving fisheries management within the next five years or a similarly short period of time. With the Earth's population heading from 7 to 9 billion by 2050, there is an urgent need to promote the fair production and distribution of food, other marine resources, solid governance, sustainable management and effective conservation will increase the ocean's productivity, bringing improved economic, social, and food security. And protecting the health of the ocean will increase its resilience to climate change and reduce some of its worst predicted impacts. More than half of our planet, where no humans can live, but which is vital for life on Earth, needs urgent care and attention. We are all responsible for restoring ocean health. We know what needs to be done, but we can't do it alone. Governments, businesses, and civil society need to work together in a joint mission to save the ocean. Support the Global Ocean Commission's proposals. Join Mission Ocean.